Hello and welcome to Shibogan Who. So a couple of weeks back, I got in touch with a bunch of YouTubers asking them if they'd want to be a part of a project I was working on to bring together the YouTube community and celebrate the return of Christopher Eccleston as the ninth Doctor. I called this project One Fantastic Scene, and here's mine. So the fantastic scene I've chosen is Pete Tyler's Goodbye. I chose this scene because when I rewatched the Eccleston era a couple of weeks back, this scene just hit me harder than it ever has before, and I genuinely think it is one fantastic scene. Now don't get me wrong, there are many scenes in series one that are worthy of being my one fantastic scene, but this one in particular is my favourite. So let's get into it, shall we? Starting with the music. Now, I'm not a musician, so I'm not going to get all technical like while talking about the score because, honestly, I'm out of my depths. Like, I haven't studied music since year nine in, like, 2014. So, yeah, I'm not going to get all, all technical on you with that. But the score from Murray Gold is, as always, absolutely fantastic. He knocks it out of the park, for me anyway. Like, Father's Day might be my favourite track on that, the entire series one soundtrack. It, it's just, it's so good. It's simple. It, it only uses one or two instruments, like synth and piano, with piano being like the main one. And it starts out quite calm and quiet, and it's, it's quite emotional, and it builds tension throughout the song. And it's just, it's just so good. Like, to think that Murray Gold made that on his computer. You know what I make on my computer? Compilations of Tom Baker swearing. Like, that's the level I'm at compared to Murray Gold who's just like a god when it comes to doing shit on your computer. I absolutely love him. He's fantastic. And he does an amazing job scoring this episode, just like he does many others. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the camera work. Now, the camera work in this episode, and especially this scene, is great. Like, really great. In the church, there's Rose, Jackie and Pete, and the camera frames each of the three characters on their own for the majority of the scene, which really helps to focus in on that particular character and the emotions that they're feeling. And it's quite it's quite isolating for the character, like it isolates their emotions specifically. I feel like that's a great technique because, you know, it gives you more time with those characters within the scene, even though they're all there. It allows you to focus on each one individually when it wants you to focus on them. And that just makes it even better when two characters enter the frame together because it adds a whole new layer of emotion to the scene and it makes it feel more personal and less isolated and it, it shows them it shows that they're going through it together especially when Jackie hugs Rose when she finally figures out that Pete isn't having an affair and that Rose is their daughter that's just so, so great and it explains a lot because Rose has always grown up hearing stories of how fantastic her dad was now imagine if he died with Jackie thinking that he'd had an affair. That would probably leave a bad memory in Jackie's mind. So it's good that they clear the air before his sacrifice. So I, I really like that. Like, it's, it's a great, great scene. And then after Jackie's hugged Rose, Pete tells her that he's, he's going to have to die. And the camera is, like, going back and forth between them, which is, like, pretty basic. But, you know, it, it works really well. And Pete says to Jackie... You're finally going to get rid of me. And you can tell he's just trying to cheer it up before he dies. Obviously, that doesn't cheer it up because she, well, her husband's about to die. But he plays it so well. And the dialogue was just so good. Which leads me to the next thing I'm going to talk about. The dialogue and the delivery. Now, the episode's written by Paul Cornell, who absolutely knocks it out of the park. I know I've, I've used that phrase twice, but, you know, I can't think of another one. Sorry. I don't have a bad thing to say about his writing in this episode. Or his later episodes, Human Nature and the Family of Blood, are both fantastic. It's a shame he hasn't wrote more. I know he wrote the Twice Upon a Time Target novelisation, and I've not read that yet. But, you know, it is, it is a shame that he can't write more for the show. The script is amazingly written. The dialogue especially feels so real and full of emotion. All different kinds as well. Humour, sadness, grief, everything. He just absolutely nails it. And the actors sell it perfectly throughout not only the scene, but the entire episode. And there's one moment in particular that gets me every time, and I'll spare you my impression, but it's when Pete says... I've had all these extra hours. 
No one else in the world has ever had that. And on top of that, I get to see you. And you're beautiful. How lucky am I, eh? This makes me cry every single time I watch it. I know I keep saying this, but it's so emotional and it's so sad. Sean Dingwall's acting is masterful. And speaking of the acting, as I've just mentioned, Sean Dingwall absolutely kills her in this scene. The same way Russell absolutely kills Pete just a few moments later. Rip Pete. But they're not the only ones killing things, because Billy Piper's at it too delivering her absolute best performance. Not only of this series, but her entire time on the show. She's just absolutely brilliant throughout. And do you know what? She She's she's just perfect. I don't really know what else to say. She's just so good throughout the entire episode, displaying a range of emotions from when she friend zones Pete. Get, gets that idea out of his head straight away. I like to think that was Paul Cornell saying this isn't back to the future there's not going to be any potential incest this was just right (laughs) fucking hell this was just him making sure that none of that goes on at all so we get a lovely heartfelt episode about the death of a companion's dad and how she ultimately cannot change it she just has to accept that he's dead and it can't be changed which is sad and the, the episode is really sad, but it, it's great because of that. Like, that layer of emotion elevates the entire episode to, to greatness. Like, it's so good, the entire episode. And I could have chose so many scenes from it. And from the entire series, really, because it's very solid. But I chose this scene because, in my opinion, at least at the moment, it's my favourite scene from series one. So, this is the conclusion of the video. I'm not going to say in conclusion because I'm not doing an exam, but basically, I really love the Christopher Eccleston era of Doctor Who. Everything about it's just fantastic. If, if you'll pardon the, the me using the character's phrase, I don't really know if you could say that's a pun. Um, but yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. And no episode hit me harder than Father's Day. And no scene hit me harder than Pete's goodbye to Rose and Jackie. And that, to me, is what truly makes this one fantastic scene. You're gonna be there for me now. <laughs> Thanks for saving me. Before I go, I'd like to say a massive thanks to everyone who's watched this video. It honestly does mean a lot. Like, I don't know why you want to listen to me sit here and ramble. You might not. You, you might be being forced to watch it. I don't know how that happened, but you might be. But more importantly, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who's got involved with the project and made their own videos. Honestly, I thought you'd all just tell me to fuck off when I asked you. Because my channel's really, really small and I've got some, some of the biggest YouTubers I know involved. And I'm really grateful that they all got involved and not just the big ones. Like, the small channels too. Like, I'm glad anyone wants us to be involved at all. Absolutely can't believe it, yeah. It's so, so good that you all want us to get involved. And all of your videos are so great. There'll be, there'll be a link to the playlist either at the top of the screen now or in the description below. But honestly, go on the playlist. There'll be loads of other videos to watch, each covering a different scene from Series 1. This is just one of them. So honestly, please be sure to go check out everyone's video. It'd mean a lot to me, and I know it'd mean a lot to them too, because they've put a lot of hard work into theirs, and they'll probably be better than this video, to be honest. And there'll be another video in the next couple of days on this channel, because I messaged Sean Dingwall asking if he'd like to, to say anything about the scene, like whether that's like a video message or a text, I don't know yet. But he replied earlier saying that he would, but he said he's busy at the moment, so it'll have to be next week, which will be next Thursday, I think. But since these videos are going out on the Wednesday, when you're watching this now, probably, then I'll be putting it in a separate video. So you'll be able to watch it there. I don't know whether it'll be, as I said, I don't know whether it'll be a video message or not. Um, be great if it is. Be great if it's a text message. I can't believe he even messaged me back to begin with, to be honest. So, 
yeah, I, I look forward to sharing that with you all. And, well, that is if he doesn't forget it, which, if he does, is completely understandable. He's a busy man. So, you know, I'm just happy that he didn't ignore me. So, you know, whether he does send me anything or he forgets, stay tuned, because if he does, then it'll definitely be up on the channel. So, I, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time on Shibogan Hill.